Today I want to show you this, my Chibson or Chinese Gibson Les Paul custom copy. So the great thing about the Chinese Les Paul copies is that when you contact the sellers, you can spec them out and you can customize them in just about any way that you want. Spec-wise, I wanted this to be a combination between my two favorite guitars, my 1972 Les Paul Custom and my ESP Eclipse. I love the heft of my Les Paul Custom with the four knob control setup, but I prefer the slim matte finish neck of my ESP, and I wanted the best of both worlds. So how did this come out? First, the good. As I said, you can customize everything. Wood choice is exactly the same on paper as a Les Paul Custom. You've got a mahogany body with a maple cap, mahogany neck, and an ebony fingerboard with 22 frets. The finish is all matte everywhere, which I prefer over the sticky, glossy finish you get on most Les Pauls. And the finished color is custom. At first I was going for the purple satin finish that James Hetfield has on his vintage Les Paul because I love it and Edwards has stopped selling that model, but then I got to messing around in Photoshop. And I ended up with this cool little double teardrop black to dark purple to black again, which I think is super awesome and I haven't seen on any other guitar. So that's cool. The logo is custom too. I kind of get why people do it, but I'm not a big fan of having the Gibson logo on a non-Gibson guitar. It's kind of like when people get those Apple stickers and they put them on a Dell or an HP laptop, or when people post something on the internet. Just because it's on there doesn't make it so. Anyways, mini rant over. I'm not much of a visual artist, so I told my girlfriend what I wanted, 
she drew the logo and the guys that built this thing were able to copy it and I think it came out awesome. The top hat knobs, the bridge, and the tailpiece all look the part and while they aren't super high end, they get the job done. Meanwhile, the locking tuners do a surprisingly good job of keeping this thing in tune, which I wasn't expecting at all. The pickups weren't as awful as I was expecting, but they weren't good either, so I've swapped them out with a set of EMG JHs. And as you've just heard, for the style of music that I play, it makes this thing sound pretty beast now. And now for what you've been waiting for, the bad. When you're dealing with AliExpress sellers from China, you have to be specific. While normally a Les Paul from Gibson, or any other single cup for that matter, comes with a 12-inch fingerboard radius, this came with a 14-inch, which isn't as comfortable for me to play. I wasn't expecting this to be something that I would have to specify, but if you're gonna order a Gibson, make sure to keep this in mind, otherwise you might be in for a pretty unpleasant surprise. The ebony on the fingerboard is also pretty cheap and feels pretty plasticky compared to the other smoother, faster ebony fingerboards that I've played. And while I asked for a super slim neck, like on an ESP, this neck is actually thicker than even my real Gibson Les Paul. These factors combined, the fingerboard radius, the poor quality ebony, and the thickness of the neck means that it's not at all fast to play if you're a lead player or a shredder, and you'll notice that I don't really do any lead work with this guitar. Now for the worst part. While the setup out of the box was actually pretty good, the action was low, there wasn't any fret buzz, the intonation didn't need that much work, I found something that was pretty disturbing. I got this guitar in November, and we had a pretty cold winter here. Once summer rolled around, I found that I had a bit of neck bow, and the action was getting a little high, so I thought that I might adjust the truss rod. However, it turned out that the poly finish actually leaked into the truss rod cavity as they were making this guitar. The result is, even after many hours of trying to chisel out all the poly finish with a screwdriver, with a drill, it is absolutely impossible to adjust the truss rod. It is completely sealed in and luthiers here want a good deal of money to fix this. I contacted the seller Kathy from Empress OEM and she offered me a whopping $15 because supposedly that is the profit that they make on one of these guitars. I'm still negotiating because that seems awfully low for a factory defect that will render this guitar eventually completely unplayable, but for now Kathy has stopped responding to my emails. So we'll see how that goes. I knew this guitar would be hit or miss going in. And for 325 bucks shipped, I think it's been a fun little experiment. It's a great looking guitar. With the pickup change, it sounds great. And for the money, you're not gonna get any custom shop to build you something with so many personal customizations. So if you're looking to get a chips in, remember to be specific. Remember that no matter how good it looks on paper and in the photos they send you, you're not getting a top shelf product. I'm Hunter, this is my Chips and Les Paul Custom. If you like this video, like button is down there, subscribe button is over here somewhere, and I'd love to hear your Chips and experiences in the comment section below. Until next time, I'll see you around and stay classy.